In this video, I try to turn a 70 series Land Cruiser into a capable off-road vehicle. So as you may already know, 70 series Land Cruisers are renowned for being horrendously tippy off-roaders with zero flex. Now this is due to several factors. So the factory sway bars have a girth any man would be proud of. So the first course of action is removing those. The problem this solves is allowing the wheels to move independently of one another, meaning tipping is reduced and traction in wombat holes and uneven terrain is greatly increased. The other issue we're going to address today is the ground clearance at the rear of the vehicle. Now there have been a few situations where I've got caught out. And then once I've got caught out, I'm unable to reverse out of the situation because the front of the car can clear the obstacle, whereas the rear gets hung up. Now this is going to be a relatively brief video, simply because I'm going on a trip in the next few days and I want to give myself the best chance I can. However, I've ordered some heavy-duty parabolic springs, and the shipment is delayed for whatever reason nobody knows. So in the meantime, I'll give myself the best chance by doing half a job now and finishing it off later with a more in-depth video. For now, we'll make do with fitting low-profile spring hangers. Now what you see here is the factory spring hanger and the aftermarket low-profile spring hanger. I'm not going to name brand names because they're not paying me to do this. And even if they were, I wouldn't let them because I think it's an overpriced product for what it is. Starting with the factory hanger, the spring pack sits on this mating face and the shock mounts here. And what you're left with is this gap here, which bridges the gap between the ground and the lowest point of the vehicle. Now this obviously isn't good. With the aftermarket product, the spring sits in this recess here, meaning that the lowest point of the surface is only about 10 millimeters lower than the spring itself. This obviously gives you a lot more ground clearance. When you compare the two, you can see this in motion. You're gaining about an inch of ground clearance, maybe more. The other advantage of this is that your shock is positioned slightly higher, and this will allow for a little extra droop at full extension. Now, as soon as I've lifted the car, I've noticed another restriction. These twin bellows airbags are preventing the leaf springs from fully extending and thus also limiting flex. Now, seeing as I don't really need airbags and I don't do much towing at all and never anything heavy, I've decided to get rid of them. And this allows me to use the airlines for much more useful purposes. So the first step in all this is to chuck your vehicle on axle stands and support the axle. Then once all the weight's taken by the jack, you can then take off the existing plates. Once you've taken the plate off, you have to cut off the leaf spring bolt so that it's flush with the nut. If you don't do this, it'll protrude below the surface of the U-bolt plate.
The U-bolts themselves are not a one size fits all. You have to cut them to the length suitable for your spring pack. So what I've done is tighten everything up by hand and mark them with the grinder so that I know how long they need to be. After this, I cut them down to size and then tidy up the threads on the bench grinder. So that's about all we've got time for today because I'm cold and hungry and I've run out of parts to put on my car. Hopefully today's efforts have improved my chances of making it through monkey gum. And once the Australian Postal Service gets its act together, then there'll hopefully be some further improvements. But until then, I'll pack my stuff and hope nothing breaks in the meantime. I still haven't learned how to end videos properly yet.